You know, I started the As Bob Sees It channel because I wanted to let you see what it was like to visit the Disney theme parks with disabilities. And, and while I've done it to a little extent, I really haven't covered it the way I should. So this is the series that's going to fix that. We're going to go around to the parks and show you what you can ride and what you can't ride. So let's start with Adventureland. But we're going to try and cover all of the rides in Adventureland, like the Enchanted Tiki Room, the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse, Jungle River Cruise, the Pirates of the Caribbean, and everybody's favorite, Aladdin's Magic Carpet Ride. What we won't be covering are the places to eat, like the Skipper's Canteen and the Dole Whip Stand, or the Sunshine Tree Terrace, because, well, just because. And the very first thing you should do before you get involved in the hustle and bustle of any park was, as soon as you come in through Main Street USA, pick up a copy of the guide map for guests with disabilities. These are absolutely the best way to start your trip. The map inside will not only let you know where all the rides and attractions are, it'll help you decide whether or not you can actually ride on the rides. And for those of you who have to have planned everything way before you get there, they're available online too. There are also several planning guides online that will show you what to expect when it comes to crowds in the parks on certain days. This might be something you need to take into consideration when you're headed there too. Because remember, you're going there to have fun. I mean, if you can't have fun, what's the sense of going there? You can sit at home and be miserable. I know, I've tried. And I really think I'd rather have a magical day than just sit at home and watch reruns. And for those of you who've been paying attention to the video and wondering what the heck is going on, well, it's kind of a video in reverse. See, this is how far on Pirates you have to go from the exit of the ride to go back to where you had to leave your wheelchair at the beginning of the ride. If you don't have somebody to go back and get it for you, it can be a really, really long walk. And there's really no place to sit here even if you have somebody to go and get it. And as we'll see in the videos to come, Pirates is not the only ride you have to do this on. But now that we've gone back to the end of the ride, let's go back to the beginning of the video. Now, going back to your guide map for guests with disabilities, you'll find that Disney uses certain icons for certain rides. They'll let you know what the requirements are for boarding. The first icon they use is a standard wheelchair icon. And this means that they have specialized vehicles that the rider can take their wheelchair directly on. This icon means you can take your wheelchair all the way up to the ride vehicle, but then you'll have to transfer into the ride vehicle. Now this icon is where it begins to be a pain in the butt, because you'll have to transfer out of your chair or ECV and transfer into a manual wheelchair to go through the ride, but then you stay in that wheelchair during the ride. Unlike when you see this icon, because here you'll not only need to transfer out of your power chair or ECV into a, one of their manual wheelchairs, you'll have to transfer out of that to the ride. But in both cases, you have to go all the way back and get your wheelchair from where it was left. And the last icon applies to only one ride in Adventureland, and that's the Swiss Family Treehouse. You have to be able to walk for that one. And I guess this is as good a place as any to talk about the Disability Access Service Card, which replaces the Guest Assistance Card. You won't really need the card if you're in a wheelchair, but if you're suffering from a not-so-visible disability, you'll probably need this card. A disability access service card can be issued at guest services. In this case, that's City Hall back on Main Street. Basically what the card does is it allows you to avoid standing in the line by issuing a kind of a super fast pass. It'll give you a return time based on the current wait time. Sort of like a fast pass, but unlike a fast pass, you can only get one of these at a time. And a disabled person doesn't have to be there to pick up the passes. Any member of the group can do it. Just make sure you have the card with you. So why are we standing around here? Let's go into the tiki room. And according to the icon, anybody can go, even in a wheelchair. Yeah, the first thing you're going to have to put up with is some corny jokes in the queue area. But it's covered, and there are fans.
take the wheelchair people in first and get them set up around the center of the room. And then they'll allow everybody else to come in. Some other things to take into consideration? The room is dark. There can be a lot of visual stimulation. And this act of the show takes a turn for the worse and starts to get darker and louder. And there's a possibility that this act could scare smaller children. And not only do you get an explosion from the volcano, you also get a thunderstorm, complete with lightning. And the birds are really loud at this point. Be careful, me fine friends. The gods have been angered by all the celebrating. But it all ends pleasantly enough. And then the birds essentially kick you out of the theater. But at least you get to hear Disney's hi ho on the way out. And it dumps you out right next to our next ride the magic carpets of Aladdin. Now, on the map, it shows you this icon. But I talked to a cast member there. And she told me as long as you're in a standard manual wheelchair or some of the power wheelchairs, you can go on the ride. It all comes down to whether your chair fits within these little gold buttons they have on the ground. And I'll bet you never even noticed them. They do, however, only have one handicap ride vehicle. That's it, number 16. There are two things you do need to consider. Well, whether you're afraid of heights. I mean, it doesn't get up that high, but it's still pretty high and how much your back can take when it comes to the jolting when the hydraulics go up and down and then shut off on their own when you're not ready for it. Although I'll admit, the jolt wasn't that big. And now that we're done spinning around, let's head across the way to the Jungle Cruise. And remember, the most important thing with Jungle Cruise is that you go down the ramp here and not the steps that are over here. And that ramp can be really, really, really crowded. Jungle Cruise is one of the rides that they're going to give you the return time for. Even if you don't have the Disability Assistance Service card, you'll still be given a return time to come back and use the one and only Handicapped Ride Boat. Like I said, Jungle Cruise only has the one Handicapped Ride Boat, so if you're in an ECV and when you can transfer, please do and leave it for somebody who can't. That being said, they can take an ECV onto the boat. inside the boat. Please supervise those children. The coast is clear. Pick those hands up and wave goodbye to the beautiful people on the dock. Now all you have to do is put up a 10 minutes of corny jokes. Again. I pay by how many I take out and not how many I bring back. Weird. Yeah. And there he is. Fun fact about Peanut. He's the fastest animal in all the jungle. He can run to speeds of 33 miles per hour. One of a kind. Truly inspirational. Do not try and outrun a rhino. Fun fact about rhinos though, they're the fastest animals 
and all of the jungle. They can run up to speeds of 33 miles per hour, one of a kind. Truly inspirational. But if you look over up ahead, that's Schweitzer Falls. It's named after the famous explorer, Dr. Albert Falls. So, fun fact about hippos, they're the fastest animals in all of the jungle. They can run up to speeds of 33 miles per hour, get one of a kind. Truly inspirational. Now folks, just a moment you've all been waiting for. The eighth wonder of the world, the back side of Wild! So we're down at the Mekong River here in Cambodia. Now folks, fun fact about Indian elephants, they're the fastest animals in all of the jungle. They can run to speeds of 33 miles per hour one of a kind, truly inspiration on you. <laughs> now folks, we are headed to the scariest portion of our entire cruise, the end. Now folks, if you did manage to enjoy your cruise today, my name is Skipper Megan. If you did it well, the games are not important, are they? If you laughed today, thank you so much for laughing. If you didn't, thank you so much for leaving. <laughs> You're gonna get out here and we're gonna take you around 15 more times, get you some khaki and a name tag, and then I'm gonna go home, sound good? You can pick him up at guest relations later. Okay. Aren't you? It was way too easy. I know, right? She's like, okay, bye. You have the credit card right, so you can go shopping. Perfect. It's the important part. See you later. Now the best part about the wheelchair lift at the Jungle Cruise is that you go straight off because it can swivel all the way around and you don't have to back off onto the dock. It makes it a lot safer that way. We good? You're yeah. Right. yeah, I was like, wait, what am I not doing that? Right. All right. There you go. Thank you much. Well, since we're stuck on boat rides, let's go over to the Pirates of the Caribbean. And I hope you have somebody to take with you because you're going to have to transfer to a manual wheelchair and transfer to the ride. That is, if they have any of their wheelchairs available. Now, the way it used to work is you'd take your wheelchair all the way down to the ride and one of the cast members would take it from there and take it through the little door to the unloading dock, which is really right next to the loading dock. Then when you came off the boat, your wheelchair was just sitting there waiting for you and all you had to do was take the elevator up into the gift shop. Who knows, maybe the old elevator was getting unreliable, but now you're supposed to walk all the way back and get your wheelchair. And even if you do have somebody to go back and get your chair for you, that courtyard over there in the sun is really the only place to sit for you to wait. I don't know how you're supposed to handle this if you're there on your own. I mean, if you could walk that far in the first place, you probably wouldn't need a wheelchair or ECV. And last but not least on the Adventureland list is the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse. Unfortunately, you have to be ambulatory to go up in there. And I miss it a lot, because when I first got to Florida, I could still walk. I used to hang out there a lot. It was pretty cool just looking in the different sections to see what they had there. But I guess that's not to be. Well, maybe they'll come up with an elevator to go up and look at it. Who knows? Although, if you can't use the elevator over at Pirates of the Caribbean, I doubt they'll put an elevator in here for you to use. Don't forget to check out our next video on Disney with Disabilities. Even Emmy would rather take the elevator, but she's still anxious to see your likes and comments. And if you liked the video, why don't you go ahead and subscribe? And when you do subscribe, don't forget to click on that bell icon. That way you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. Thanks for watching. See you next time. And although I did say we wouldn't be covering any of the restaurants, we did eat at the Skipper Canteen for the first time, so be looking for that review later. But for now, here's a drive-through of the main dining area. It's really kind of cool. <laughs>